thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to, to, to participate to this, uh, to this uh, seminar. As a matter of fact, uh, technology transfer, knowledge transfer is one of the activities in which uh, I've been uh, most involved uh, in, my, in my career. And um, I really like this topic because I think uh, it is, um, it is uh, extremely relevant given the importance of research activities and uh, given the fact that we invest uh, so much you know, worldwide in research. And so we must take care of research results. We invest a lot, even if we should invest perhaps, perhaps more, okay? So uh, I, I think I will, uh, uh, speak for uh, not more than 30 minutes, uh, Simona, because I would be happy to, to, uh, to receive your questions and, and discuss and share some opinions uh, with you. Uh, you already introduced uh, me, so there is no need to, to, to go through my CV, just uh, the fact that uh, I, I, I'm, I'm I've always been quite interested in combining my more theoretical research with uh, applied situations. In other words, uh, since I studied technology transfer, I, I've always tried to get involved in technology transfer processes in my universities, in talking with companies, in talking with, uh, with uh, researchers and so on. And so this has been uh, the, the approach that I have uh, been following in, in my research career, now combining theory and, and, and practice at the same time. And uh, uh, Simona mentioned NetVal, and I think that introducing NetVal is already part of the contents of this, of this uh, seminar, because we set up NetVal about 20 years ago in Italy. Uh, with uh, a very limited number of universities. But why did we set up uh, a network of uh, technology transfer offices? Well, we, we did it because these, uh, these job, these activities were very poorly developed in Italy. Okay, from time to time, there was a university with a patent, a university with a spin-off company, a university with, with, which had a, a problem, let's say, in dealing with contracts with uh, industry, but they weren't able to deal with these activities. Uh, sometimes the legal office was, uh, was asked for an opinion. Sometimes there was this uh, general affairs office, but slowly technology transfer offices started to emerge. And, uh, Usually, uh, they employed young people, and these young people really didn't know how to, 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 to do this job. So we, we, um, we, we thought that it was important to keep together so that uh, those who knew more could teach to those who knew less, okay? And maybe one university knew more about patents, another one knew more about international collaboration. So we started to share all this knowledge, okay? Because the, the, there was no competition among universities. And this is why we were able to, to build such a, such a nice community, let me say. Uh, this is a picture taken uh, from a summer school because during the summer and sometimes during the winter, winter we meet all together to, to learn together uh, because Technology transfer is a complex uh, issue, and there isn't really a book which contains the magic recipes. We keep learning all the time. Now, Network, NetVal uh, has, uh, uh, has associates almost all Italian universities, the most important uh, uh, public research organizations, and also some international organizations such as, such as yours, okay? So we, uh, we, we recently included also research hospitals, um, which, which are very important organizations uh, and so on. But let's make it simple. Why is technology transfer a problem? 
Well, it is a problem because in a very simplified model, very simplified, public research stops at a certain point. Once you have reached a publication, once, once uh, an experiment uh, in the laboratory works, research stops and you keep and you start doing something else because okay i've reached my task the, the, the i published the paper and so on but on the other side uh, industry which is often responsible for the application of research results is in a sort of a waiting position they would like research results to approach the application field to get to get closer to the market they wait down there so if research stops here and if industry waits down there there is a sort of a gap uh, there is a sort of a gap which prevents important research results to reach application so we have this gap which can be filled with knowledge transfer tools, with knowledge transfer activities, oh, so that good research uh, can, can reach the market and uh, the market uh, in, in the sense of society, no? can, can reach society and, uh, and express the benefits of this good, uh, good research activity. Of course, uh, this is a very simplified and linear model because in practice, we know that it is not a point-to-point -point, uh, uh, transfer. Uh, for example, the open innovation model, which was mentioned by, by Simona, is a model which is uh, now well known uh, in, in, in companies, uh, in public administration, but also in research organizations. The open innovation model tells us that uh, the, 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 the path from research to up to society to application uh, can can follow different uh, different ways okay sometimes uh, a, a single transfer but sometimes there are intermediate organizations technologies can be combined so it is not it is not so easy as the linear approach here might suggest and i've also had a look at your organization okay i've i've seen uh, that you have uh, a technology transfer section in your uh, in your uh, website and I've, I've tried to to understand what it is about of course it is uh, I've, I've i've read that it is an international organizations i've read about uh, the emphasis on developing countries i've seen uh, the specialization on on certain specific uh, scientific fields i've also seen about this activity no? which is uh, uh, immediately visible in your website, no? Um, as, I've, as I have understood it, uh, it is a, a series of videos where you teach how to uh, apply certain technologies, okay? And, um, and, and, and this helps me sort of understand what is technology transfer for you, no? Technology transfer is bringing research results to the field of applications so that they can be applied in different geographical contexts. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this applies to universities, but mm, it, it applies in general to public research organizations. In the past, uh, the uh, public research was, was intended as the factory of new knowledge. And then also the factor of education, you know, students and so on. But also re more recently, the factory of technology transfer and even the factory of territorial development because there are increasing expectations uh, about the fact that uh, universities and research organizations can determine uh, regional economic development. Okay, sometimes a university is expected to bring new employment, create socio-economic development. So in a way, I think uh, also considering your institution, perhaps we have the expectation that public research uh, contributes to global growth processes, global, uh, sustainable, fair, inclusive growth processes. So it is a big responsibility, I think, for, 
for research organizations. However, things are not so easy because again, let me show you two extreme visions. So when, when I say extreme visions, I, I, I mean I'm trying to oversimplify. One vision is the Republic of Science. Uh, the fans of this Republic of Science argue that researchers should not be bothered in any way, okay? They should be let alone, alone doing research activities because this is the way that research goes on and the peer review system is perfect and uh, you publish research and sooner or later someone will learn from your publications, okay? In an extreme view, okay? Forgive me for this. On the other side, there is, let's say, the triple helix or the entrepreneurial university vision, which, which argues that you must sort of help research results to reach society, to reach the market. And so uh, it is important to be able to use patents, to be able to use spin-off companies, to be able to use collaborations with companies, to be able to use a number of technology transfer tools, otherwise uh, uh, research cannot be exploited. Eh? And when I say exploited, I don't mean in, in monetary terms. I mean reach society to, to determine benefits for, for society. So these two extreme views. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there are many knowledge transfer tools. Hmm? Uh, we usually overemphasize uh, knowledge transfer tools like patents and then licensing activities and all, or startup companies. Uh, often journalists uh, um, ask us about how many patents do you have, how much money you have done, you have made, uh, how many spin off companies considering these as the only knowledge transfer channels, but they are not. Huh? Uh, collabora you see below the level of, of the water, no? below the surface, there are very important knowledge transfer channels. Collaborative research, contract research, networking, education, communication. No? The example I mentioned on your website is an example of communication huh? uh, uh, through the communicate through those videos, you are generating knowledge transfer processes. No? And, and they are very extremely, extremely important, I think. Uh, universities are important. Public research organizations are important because they have an impact on, on society. Uh, here is the case, a case that some of you know, huh? the University of Udine, which is close to Trieste. After the earthquake, uh, people there wanted a university because they thought that the university could generate spillovers and uh, positive effects on society. Another interesting effect, I don't know if you know this, this picture. This is a picture taken from the University of Calabria in the south of Italy. Well, in the early 70s, there were several state interventions in Calabria, which is uh, a less industrialized region in Italy. Well, to, to the city of Cosenza, the city of Cosenza received a university, a new university, and they were not happy at all. They preferred a large petrochemical plant or, or, uh, or uh, some public administration offices they received the university, but now they are happy because the university has generated the flows of young people, startups, uh, uh, cultural spillovers. So at the end of the story, probably they were the luckiest in Calabria in, in receiving a university. The importance of research activity. Uh, this picture was taken in the 50s because it was thanks to the collaboration between research and industry with good public funding that the first Italian electronic calculator was 
designed and built. It was called CEP, eh? collaboration between University of Pisa, the National Research Council, and Olivetti, a very famous company at that time. So the first electronic calculator, thanks to, uh, to, to university research. More recently, uh, in COVID time, uh, this is a ventilator that was designed through the collaboration of several Italian universities and uh, public research organizations. It was patented, but then it, it is freely available to anyone who wants to build a relatively cheap ventilator eh? in, in a period in which uh, ventilators are very important and very and, and, and scale, scarce and sometimes too expensive. Sometimes public uh, research can generate uh, spin-off companies. In, a way, in other words, sometimes PhD students or researchers or professors uh, take their research results out of the university lab because it is not really the university job to, to make products and services and sell them on the market. This, there are many examples in Italy. This is one of them, a spin-off from University of Milano Bicocca. They make glasses, windows, which, uh, uh, which absorb and, and, and generate uh, um, energy, okay? So with a very, uh, with sensors and, and a very sophisticated material. So all these uh, are uh, knowledge transfer examples, uh, not for generating uh, profits or for necessarily making someone rich, uh, but uh, in order to bring benefits to society. And uh, the, nice, uh, the nice thing is that also very young people are able to do this. Uh, <clears throat> in recent years, we got used to the fact that PhD students can be protagonists of uh, knowledge transfer actions. Yes, but also undergraduate students can. These are three undergraduate students from the University of Bologna who study bioengineering, and they had been in Africa for some, uh, uh, some uh, activities, and they realized that in Africa, hospitals had, uh, uh, had difficulties in taking care of people who had been severely burnt, okay? Because you need particularly clean, clean rooms. So they started this company and uh, they make this product. They make a sort of a box, which is actually a bit larger than a box, where especially children uh, can, can stay. And it is a relatively cheap and very safe box, which can be bought by hospitals to treat this kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, injured uh, children, okay? So again, they used the knowledge they built up in a university, they started the company, and absolutely I can guarantee to you that their objective is not to become rich and to make extraordinary profits. Their objective is to have an impact on society because uh, we, uh, this, this seminar has the word technology transfer in the title, but more and more often uh, from technology transfer, we switch to knowledge transfer. And from knowledge transfer, we are uh, switching, we are evolving towards the concept of impact. Uh, the third mission of university, the third mission of public research organization beyond research and education. The third mission is to have an impact on society, an economic and social impact on society. This is really what, what we are talking about. Again, this is an invention made in the University of Bologna, but without the intervention of the technology transfer office, this invention would not have met the potential users. It is a, a new material and uh, uh, boxes made with this new material um, allow 
fruits and vegetables to last longer. Okay, but it is not enough to make the invention because inventions often need development phases eh? and investments are needed for these development phases. And so the interaction between the inventor and the, the technology transfer office of the university allowed to reach uh, this, this stage. Um, or think about the impact, again, that universities and research organizations can have in, in some situations. This is a picture taken in Guayaquil, in Ecuador, where the, the, the university, Universidad Politecnica Salesiana, chose to set up its new building, its new campus, in, in one of the poorest areas of the city of Guayaquil. Okay? Again, determining impact. They could have chosen a, a, a better part of the city, but uh, uh, you, you create impact on society in many different ways. Um, I've, all, I've been uh, in Israel several times, and um, uh, I, I've been impressed by the way uh, in which they manage uh, research and innovation processes. Mm -hmm. um, for example, this picture was taken uh, in the main hall of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And as you can expect, uh, they have a series of pictures with Nobel Prizes, uh, ERC winners, and so on, big people in science. Of course, that's obvious, no? Uh, I expect every university to have these pictures. What is, more, what is also very interesting is that after the main hall, they have a very large corridor. And in this corridor, they have pictures of the innovators. So these are the scientists. And of care, glory to the scientists, perfect. But they also um, want to show that they have a number of innovators. And uh, they are professors who not only made good, uh, <clears throat> good, um, good research, but they were also um, uh, been able to bring those results uh, to the market. Eh? They set up companies or they made uh, collaborations with the industry and so on, okay? So the scientists and the innovators, I think very, very important. Uh, time is, is going fast. Uh, the objective is not to make money. Eh? An important person in the Ministry of University in this country a few years ago said, ah, but with your technology transfer activities, we are not, you are not making a lot of money. Well, uh, making money is not our first objective. The first objective is to have impact on society. Uh, but in order to have impact on society, you have to take care of researchers. You have to take care of the research results they make. This is why in NetVal, we strongly support the idea that a technology transfer office is necessary because it is an important element. Then you also need many other ingredients to create impact. You need companies. Of course, you need very good research. You need also financial institutions, but you also need a very good uh, technology transfer office in your institution. Uh, let me go on. Okay, this is a, a, a quotation uh, by this, this person, Professor Moody Chavez, is Vice President of Technology Transfer at the Weizmann Institute in Israel. The Weizmann Institute is, a, is an organization which makes science. Mm? It is not a university. They are only interested in science. And, uh, and uh, Moody says, we are very interested in technology transfer, but we don't want to force any scientist to get involved in technology transfer. All I want is that they do very good research and in case they invent something, they tell me eh? and I will take care of the technology transfer process. If they want to get involved, fine, I will get them involved. 
but if they don't, no problem. Uh, they are good scientists. They must continue to be good scientists unless they want to get involved. Uh, I will skip this. <clears throat> it is interesting that in the UK, uh, a few years ago, they started to evaluate universities not only according to their scientific outputs, but also according to the impact they make. But the impact is very difficult to measure. So uh, in the UK, since uh, a few years, they ask universities to write case studies about the impact. Mm? And uh, for example, what I've seen on your, on your website could be object of a very nice case study because the university might, might write, I have invented something and I have made videos which describe this invention so that other people can use it. And this video has been downloaded and seen by hundreds of thousands of people. Perfect. I, I haven't earned a single euro, zero, but I have certainly uh, had a, a very uh, strong impact on society, okay? So uh, the, 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 in the UK, they have been looking for this kind of impact. And the nice, the nice thing is that starting from this year, uh, universities in Italy are also asked to, to write uh, impact case studies to show how they have an impact on society. And it doesn't matter if you are into robotics, philosophy, political sciences, or, or uh, biotechnology. You can have an impact in many different ways. Uh, however, it takes time. It takes time. It is not that you set up a technology transfer office today, you organize uh, a few training courses, and suddenly uh, you will have impact case, uh, cases uh, uh, tomorrow. It takes time. Uh, it takes time because you need uh, uh, collaborations with companies, collaborations with public administrations. You need uh, maybe to consolidate a certain culture of impact. So it takes, it takes time. So um, what is it that we believe in? We, we believe that making money is not the objective or at least is not the most important objective of technology transfer activities. Of course, uh, if a company is interested in one of our inventions, in one of our patents, we should not give it for free. But making money is not the objective. Uh, impact is the objective and, and uh, impact doesn't uh, happen uh, only thanks to spontaneous flows of knowledge. So it requires specific actions. In order to maximize impact, you need specific actions. And it is important, however, to represent, to describe, to communicate the impact. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen on your website very easily that initiative about uh, the videos, okay? But I wonder if your impact case studies are well described in a specific section of your website. Usually in our universities, impact case studies are not described. And it is important to describe them. Uh, first, because the people out there uh, tend to think that university and research organizations are not very useful. So uh, to show them cases of impact is important. And second, because internally they can generate imitation effects. Okay? If you see that someone in the, in the lab uh, at the end of the corridor has made some, some nice initiatives which has generated the impact, maybe you also have an idea about that. Okay? And it is important, however, to have technical knowledge about how these knowledge transfer tools and mechanisms work. Not because, in my opinion, every researcher must become an entrepreneur 
or must have uh, a lot of collaborations with the industry. Not at all, but because I think that in 2021, these tools uh, must be the, 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 the professional, the professional, um, how do you say, uh, the, the professional tools that every researcher has. Okay? So patenting and spin-offs can be useful in some specific cases, but it is absolutely fascinating uh, to observe how many different channels and forms uh, impact uh, can, can have. So two last slides, Simona. Uh, some of you are PhD students and some of you answered a questionnaire. Thank you very much for that. We are uh, launching a research uh, to hundreds of PhD students in, in Italy. And this is a very first uh, um, uh, result. And uh, you, have, you can see uh, the, the violet column is yours, uh, no? people from your institution. And please compare it with the dark blue column, uh, which is uh, other STEM PhD students, because I think it is important to compare STEM with STEM, okay? And these results are normalized because you were required to answer on a scale one to five, but these are normalized. What is interesting, um, uh, let me emphasize the differences. It seems that you are more interested than the average of STEM PhD students in generating economic and social impact at local regional level, okay? More interested than, than uh, other STEM colleagues. Whereas uh, you are not very interested in collaborating with large firms, just like other STEM PhDs, and you are very interested in obtaining uh, research results which are original, and are useful to solve the problems of society. Other, other uh, uh, similarities and differences, you can see that you are more interested in contributing to the competitiveness of companies in your region, okay? Uh, whereas you are less than average interested in obtaining interesting ideas from companies probably because uh, other STEM uh, PhDs also include engineering and so on, where contacts with industry is more important. You are not very interested in starting your own company like other STEM PhD students, and uh, definitely you are not interested in starting your own company to make money like other PhD students. Okay, Simona. So, it took me about uh, 38 minutes, okay? Sorry, more than 30, but I hope there are questions and, uh, and uh, there is the opportunity to go uh, again over maybe some of the topics that I went through too quickly.